Many astronomers collect a number of telescopes over the years, and I at one time had eight in, in one go. I've had over 50 telescopes in total over the years. And I often wonder, what if I only had to choose one telescope, what would it be? And this is quite a common question on, on the forums. So I've had plenty of time to think about this, and I've definitely come up with one budget option and one more premium option. Not all telescopes do every role. For example, a large Dobsonian, it's great for nudging around the sky looking at deep sky objects, um, but not so great for deep sky imaging. Just like a, a small 70mm ED refractor, it's going to be good at deep sky imaging on an equatorial mount, but it's not going to be good for taking out and picking out deep space objects or, or for planetary imaging or observing. So what I've looked at is what telescopes would be a good all-round telescope that you could just, if you had to live with just one for the rest of your life in this hobby, what would it be? So what are the common things that we want to get up to in amateur astronomy? They tend to be planetary and lunar imaging and observing, or deep sky imaging or observing. And more recently, a lot more people are doing solar imaging and observing looking at the sun and also with um, more light pollution that we're getting nowadays people are starting to do something called EAA or they have been doing for some time but it's becoming increasingly popular which is electronic aided astronomy where you use uh, it's like real-time imaging it's not as processing heavy as astrophotography but it gives you a good in the field idea of what you're looking at in more detail than you can see with your naked eye. So they're the areas I'll be looking at, thinking about what telescopes would be good at all these roles on both a budget and a more premium option that can cover all these bases basically. And the budget option is might not be a surprise, it might be a surprise, but um, I'd be surprised if it was a surprise, is the 6 inch F5 Newtonian. Um, these can be had for as little as a, I think there's a Celestron C6N, which is, it retails for £119 in, in the UK, and I'm sure you can work out what that is in your own currency, but it's, I'm sure you'll agree it's quite a reasonable sum of money. So why did I pick the 6 inch F5 Newtonian refractor, reflector, reflector even. Well, it's small enough to be portable, yet it has enough aperture to show plenty of deep sky objects. Also, it's got plenty of resolution for showing planetary and lunar detail. Its fast F5 focal ratio makes it a good choice for deep sky imaging or electronic aided astronomy, EAA. Yet, it's no problem to add a Barlow lens if you want to uh, get more focal length and uh, a more cropped in view for imaging the planets or observing the planets or the moon. From my experience both of 6 inch and 8 inch Newtonians, the 6 inch is a lot more manageable on an equatorial mount for both observing and imaging. I've owned a couple of 8 inch um, Newtonians on EQ5s, HEQ5s and it is difficult to reach the eyepiece a lot of the time or get to you know collimate it whilst you're looking down the eyepiece. The size of a 6 inch F5 Newtonian is very manageable um, especially if you have the focuser opposite the counterweight bar no on the equatorial mount. No matter where you put the the mount and scope I'll I always find that I can reach the eyepiece if the if the eyepiece is in line with the counterweight bar. It's just, that's a top tip for you if you've not found out that yourself. There's a number of affordable mounting options for a 6 inch F5 Newtonian. There's the Humble AZ4 and the EQ3s from Skywatcher, which are plenty for observing and planetary lunar imaging. And um, if you want to do deep sky astrophotography, there's the Skywatcher HEQ5, or the Celestron AVX, and there's also options from, for example, Ioptron. Also, you can quite easily build a Dobsonian base to use with your um, six inch um, reflector, and you can then use it on like a tabletop. I'll put up in the corner 
a picture of a Dobsonian mount I built for a Altair F5 six inch uh, reflector. And as you can see, I'm using it on a tabletop and it's very portable and, and handy, with, but with, still with plenty of light grass. Optically, Newtonians are considered apochromatic because you've not got the false color to deal with, like you have a achromatic refractor. There's no violet fringing on the edge of bright objects that can um, reduce sharpness. But at F5, you're, there is a bit of um, coma to deal with, and, and but that's easily solved with a coma corrector. There's quite a number on the market. The secondary supports of a Newtonian do cause diffraction spikes on bright objects like bright stars and uh, faint diffraction patterns on bright planets even. Some people mine this, some people don't. On some objects it can actually look quite fetching like the Pleiades M45. They, I think it does look nice with um, uh, diffraction spikes but I'm not so keen when you're, when you're viewing uh, Jupiter through a Newtonian and you've got t uh, four faint bands coming from it. I do prefer the isolation of, a, of the globe of the planet like you get through a Maxitoff or a refractor. So that's one little downside but on the flip side these are extremely affordable at little more than £100 for, a six, for six inches of aperture which you can use for a number of rolls. So you know it's a small price to pay when you think about it. Dew can be a big problem with a lot of telescopes but I never found it a problem with any of my six inch uh, Newtonians. Um, Designs such as SCTs and um, Maxitoffs, where you've got a corrector plate right at the front, they're, they're a big problem, but not so much with refractors or Newtonians. You can use a six inch Newtonian for solar observing by putting some solar film across the front of the aperture, but this, this isn't the safest, in my opinion. I think it's, the, um, it's much better to have a, a solar wedge which you can only really use with a refractor, so maybe another downside, but it, it's not impossible to use um, a, a Newtonian for observing the sun. you just got to be really careful and make sure the solar film's got no holes in it and it's firmly secured to the front of the telescope. Cool down time is relatively short for a six inch Newtonian also compared to much larger telescopes. Or, um, or large maxitops with thick corrector plates or large SCTs. The, the tube is open so air currents can escape and it can acclimatise quite quickly. I think the trade-off with Newtonians is that they sometimes need a bit of maintenance, sometimes need their mirrors aligning, which is a process called collimation, where you just line up the primary mirror with the secondary so everything's correctly orientated to give you a spot-on image through the eyepiece. This is quite a simple procedure when you know how to do it and there's tons of information out there on the internet. It literally takes you about five minutes to learn but you you quite likely need a collimation cap or a laser collimator is a um, handy thing to have if it's collimated itself. And that's another skill, collimating the collimator. So just a Cheshire collimator is quite a handy thing to have and it's a basic tool you can use to line up all your mirrors, it's quite affordable. And occasionally, after a number of years, you will have to get your mirrors recoated. but this is less of an issue nowadays with silicon oxide overcoats on mirrors. Um, my father-in-law's in fact had, a, is, is, had his 8-inch Newtonian for probably 40 years and he's never had the mirror recoated and I can assure you it gives great views of the planets. I did try to collimate it for him recently, maybe a year ago, and the secondary support snapped because it was so so old. So I had to machine him up a new one. But apart from that, it's a good telescope. So in summary, I think a six inch Newtonian could be all the telescope you need if you're on a budget. It, it can do a bit of everything. It can do um, deep sky imaging, you can do planetary imaging, planetary observing, deep sky observing, um, solar if you're very careful with solar film on the front. It's also a very portable telescope so you can take it out and about with you and there's a number of mounts on the market that are affordable you can buy to use it for both observing and imaging and you can also use it for because uh, it's 
got a fast f ratio you can use it for electronic aided astronomy quite effectively also what would i choose with a larger budget as a single telescope to cover all bases in amateur astronomy i would choose the four inch ed f7 refractor it does everything the six inch f5 reflector does only it's more portable and can be therefore fitted into a case for travel um, requires no collimation whatsoever it's um, a pretty robust telescope that, that's very low maintenance. There's no diffraction spikes. There's no central obstruction. So your contrast is a lot higher. So it can actually compete with the larger aperture of a six inch Newtonian. You, it, you'll find that they're actually comparable in what they will show you. And because of the, the high contrast and the razor sharp images of ED refractors, they can sometimes show you a bit more, especially in light polluted skies. They seem to cut through the bad seeing more easily. The slower F ratio of seven is a bit kinder on eyepieces and there's less field curvature because the focal length's a bit longer. And um, because longer focal lengths uh, optics are easier to manufacture there's more chance that the the figure on the optics is going to be a, of a higher standard because it's f7 it is a bit slower but you can quite easily add a 0.8 reducer flattener to give you a flat field and a faster focal ratio of f5.6 which is um, very adequate for deep sky imaging and as with the Newtonian, you can also borrow it for planetary imaging and uh, observing also. So you can do everything the Newtonian can do, but you get a bit better image quality, lower maintenance and a bit more portability. And because you don't have to worry about recoating mirrors every five, ten years, these things can last lifetimes and often be passed on through generations. <laughs> I don't know if people pass telescopes through generations, do they? Um, I like to think they do. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That's a nice thought, I, you know. Um, anyway, so yeah. Um, but the thing that it does excel at on top of all the things that the Newtonian can do is that it's very good for solar. You can use, um, you can use solar film on the front like you can a Newtonian, but a refractor does allow you to use a number of other devices like a Herschel wedge that you can plug into the back. And it's like a really dark prism that filters out 99.9% .9 of the light from the sun. And if that accidentally falls out while you're looking down the telescope, there's nothing going to happen. But if you're looking for an eyepiece and the film falls off the front of the telescope, you'll burn a hole through your eyeball. It's a safer thing and it gives better detail with a, with a solar wedge than it does with solar film on the front of a telescope. Also, there's more, in more recent years, there's devices out called quarks, which um, you can put on the back of refractors that allow you to get exquisite detail in hydrogen alpha. A four inch um, ED refractor will give a lifetime of enjoyment in terms of lunar and planetary because it starts to allow you to see finer details rather than just the, the main bands. You can start to see ovals and barges in the banding and out the banding and um, uh, lunar moon transits, shadows and um, the and detail in the great red spot as well. So every time you look at the planets with a four inch ED refractor, you, you have got an engaging amount of detail, not just a few bands like you've got with a 70 mil or an 80 mil. It, it seems to jump up. I think you get something like 63 percent more uh, surface area for grasping those photons compared to an 80 mil refractor. Details on Saturn include being able to see a crisp Cassini division and shading on the globe of, of um, Saturn, so another great site. I've had some fantastic sites with a budget um, F9 Celestron ED100 before now, uh, razor sharp, etched sharp uh, images of the moon, of, uh, the moon and the planets. Um, refractors also have incorporated dew shields, some of which are sliding so it can make them, the scope even more portable for take around and, and on aeroplanes with you even in a hand luggage. You could probably just about get away with a F7 with a sliding dew shield in hand luggage, I should think. Don't quote me on that though. 
but yeah, um, no problem with dew control on refractive, the dew shield's long enough. So again, they're just very easy to use, no collimation, don't have to worry so much about dew, very transportable in a case, and no very low maintenance, as I said. And they have a similar cooldown time to a, a six inch uh, Newtonium from my experience, which is reasonably quick. And this is what you want, really. You don't want to be bringing a telescope from a warm, warm house outside, and then have to wait absolutely ages for it to reach optimum performance for all those tube currents to cool down and the optics to start performing their best as it acclimatizes to the temperature and then the clouds roll in after you've been there outside for 45 minutes an hour and then you've got to go back in again before you've actually achieved anything so something that can quickly cool and reach equilibrium and perform its best outside is always going to get used more than a giant telescope that takes ages to set up um, if you've not got an observatory of course and that takes ages to cool down and by the time you've done all that then the clouds are rolled in and then you, you're stuffed and then you, you're just bitter with the hobby for a while. The only really big downsides to ED refractors are the expense, the, the, um, the cost per unit aperture is quite massive compared to um, mirrored telescopes like reflectors and also the, the reach is a limit in size where it becomes a bit impractical like you don't you see plenty of 12 inch Newtonian owners out there but there's not many 12 inch refractor owners out there it would just be an impractical in size and cost to build such a thing. In summary, I feel either the 6 inch F5 Newtonian or the F7 ED 4 inch refractor are excellent choices depending on your budget. They cover a multitude of areas we like to delve in in amateur astronomy. And luckily, we don't, no one forces us just to have one telescope, but it's an interesting thought. If you could only pick one telescope, what would it be? And they are my choices. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have a different opinion or agree please leave comments below and if you'd like to see more videos along a similar line please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you and goodbye.